In this tutorial, we will look at uh, creating a basic circuit or inserting symbols. And what I have here is a default project, and I'm just going to go ahead and open up my first page. And I do have a section here where I can start to uh, insert um, a particular uh, symbol. So I'm going to very, I'm, I'm going to very basically uh, start my my drawing, my design. And here in this particular page, I want to start to insert some motors. Now, of course, the very default basic way of inserting symbols is to right click and use the function insert symbol. In the insert symbol dialog, we will open up and we will select the different symbols that we need to insert for the schematic representation. In this particular case, I'm going to select the motor and I'm going to go to the motors and I'm going to go to the motors for connection points. And as I go down the tree, I do have uh, the preview that also shrinks. So if I continue to go down and I select the M3 underscore one, I'm left now with, with the most lower lowest level of the tree view that I can get. I can go no further. I'm going to grab here um, the motor and the symbol representation that I want. When we're working in NFPA, usually we're looking at the variant F for our symbol representations in maybe 80% of the cases. And also when we're working IEC, we're going to be looking at variant A in again, pretty much 80% of the cases. So in this case here, I'm going to grab my F variant, double click on it. At any point in time, if I want to place this in any location per se, um, I'm also going to make sure that I'm working on a 0.5 of an inch grid because there is a standard I have to res uh, follow, the NFP standard, which states that I usually have to work in a 0.5 inch of an uh, inch grid when I'm doing uh, macro um, electrical design schematics. If I hit the tab key before placing it, I do have access to the different rotations of this symbol representation, so I can always change it at any point in time. When I'm ready to go ahead and drop it, I'm just going to click and drop, and this is going to drop the first symbol, and I can start to associate some additional data. In this case, I can start to see that the display DT is automatically associated based on the line numbering that I'm dropping this in. So line 146, that's where this uh, insertion point for the symbol is located. Therefore, the device tag is going to be st stating that this is the MTR 146. Uh, we can associate connection point designations. We can always use the default ones. Or if we need to, we can always create our own. I can always go type 1 and do control and uh, enter to get the carriage return, two, control, enter, three, control, enter, and then I can put in for the ground, I can say G and D, and this will be the connection point designation. It could always be L1, L2, L3, T1, T2, T3, whatever you want, the designation, you can actually manually type this information in. Technical characteristics, again, you can manually type this information in as well. All the information that you see here, you can manually input. Of course, when you pick a part, you can always tell the system to insert all the part data into these appropriate fields. Um, if you're putting in some functional information here under function text, you can right click and do a multilingual input if you're working with a translation module, which will permit you to insert multilingual uh, text. In this particular case, I'm going to leave it blank. And of course, you have some additional data uh, where you can uh, modify and change the display orientation for all the properties being displayed around your symbol. For the symbol logic, you can also modify an ex existing data to specify that this logic has to be different. An example down here for representation type on the logic of the symbol, what would it be? If this motor is not something that was associated or is, is being uh, is part of my my project per se, but maybe it's a customer uh, component that's already in his in his company or in his in his plant. I can always specify that this is an external uh, an external representation type. Therefore, the device, the part number, and all the associated elements for this particular symbol representation will not be uh, represented in any of my reports except the connection list. And the connection list will show me that I do have some cables or wires running from a terminal strip to this motor that's on a field on my customer site, but the connection uh, from two list will show up for this one motor, and that's one of the properties that we have uh, for the external uh, representation type. Now, of course, you have multiple and you can also always go ahead and pick the one that best suits your needs. And of course, under parts, we can actually go ahead and pick a part. We can type in a number. We can actually go here. And when we click on this field, three dots will appear and I can click on that. Or I can be uh, used a smart selection. I can do a device selection, which will um, create 
uh, filter for all the parts that are in my parts database and it will filter those parts and give me only those parts that are associated to a three-phase uh, motor uh, function definition which is the symbol that I have in my schematic so I'm just gonna leave those as is blank I'm just gonna continue my default in uh, representation and you'll notice that I do have another motor that sticks to my mouse so it's ready to go I can actually go ahead and place multiple if I need to or if I hit the backspace on my keyboard it will open up the symbol selection dialog again where I can go ahead and select a different uh, symbol so in this case I'm gonna grab here a motor overload symbol I, rec I recognize the one that I need right off the bat from the preview. That's the one I'm going to grab. I'm going to double click. And as soon as I place the symbol in front of the other one, there is an auto connecting line that appears. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch it or bring it in closer depending on my needs. In this case, I'm going to place it somewhere around here, click to drop, and then I start associating some information. If I continue my symbol insertion, I, if I hit the backspace again, I'm going to go ahead to my uh, coils and contacts and I'm going to say here I want to put some normally open contacts and I want to use some power normally open contacts. So this one symbol here, I can see by the definition that it has that it's for power. So pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to double click on that and all I have to do is just hold the one. Uh, keep my finger on my mouse button and just drag a line down and this this will create your three pull contact so as soon as I let go there's your three pull contact and we're good to go now you do have the connection points one two one two one two which is not necessarily a problem because when I bring in a part these contacts have to be associated to a relay the relay is going to get a part that information of the relay part is going to transfer over to the contacts as soon as I give it the same device tag that's why you have a um, you have a question mark in front of the connect the, the, the connection um, the contacts here you have a question mark because it's not going to number it like the other ones that it numbered based on the fact that this um, contact has to be associated to a relay which might be represented on a completely different schematic page so here I'm going to use some T nodes and under the T nodes I'm going to click here and you'll notice that you have some T node representation and this T node representation has multiple uh, orientations so this one is telling me that my source is at the bottom there's one wire going up one wire going to the right if I hit the tab key it'll shift and give me a different orientation and I hit the tab key again and now this one is a daisy chain type which is sources on the top going to the right and then working its way back down which is a daisy chain, daisy chain style connection and all I have to do is position myself where that first connection is going to meet where they're going to cross and I can also hold my mouse button drag a line diagonally and all three are going to automatically connect as soon as I let go those are now connected and those show me here a uh, little dot to represent that those are junctioned right over there now of course if you want to use the dot you can use that representation but you can always change that representation to look like um, the default IEC type representations if needed those will be in the project settings um, if I continue my drawing here um, I do have the ability to create toolbars and I have created here a toolbar which automatically cycles through the different most commonly used symbols that I use and I'm just going to click here on the terminals I do have here a ground symbol and I can click on that and I can bring that in so with ePlan you actually have a multitude of ways of making your design a lot easier so I'm just going to click OK for my ground symbol and I'm going to connect that with a uh, with an elbow connection and just connect that over here and I'm going to grab a terminal symbol I'm going to drop in a terminal strip and drag my line down let go and there's my terminal strip TB41 it's already positioned and ready to go yeah, so basically creating a circuit very easily from the default functionality um, by inserting the fun by using the insert symbol functions you will achieve uh, your design really rapidly and really easily and to finish off with these contacts if the 1212 bothers you like I mentioned before once we associate it to the relay this shouldn't be a problem but just to demonstrate here I can always click on the drop down arrow and say these are 1 2 3 4 5 6 hit OK and you'll notice that I grabbed the first one and he's actually uh, uh, running or managing the two bottom ones as well so this is how to create a circuit and a basic insert symbol uh, functionality